evening and good afternoon, folks. We are here today to talk about a very important and influential anime movie. My name is Blake. I'm Brianna. And we are going to talk about Akira. I understand how to pronounce it properly, but for the sake of the mass audience, I'm not going to do that. But anywho, this is a movie that I have seen a number of times. Of course, it's a really, really important movie. Everyone's familiar with it. The story of Kaneda and Tetsuo. Well, a, a really a broad cast of characters that you follow throughout the story in this very surreal 2019-based Neo-Tokyo. It's very cyberpunk. It's very stylized. And, of course, most people who have a fancy for anime to any degree are familiar with this film, whether or not they've seen it. Its imagery is very iconic and is mimicked and referenced in a number of other things. When it comes to this film, there really is just kind of an overall consensus that we all like it. It's, it's very well received. I mean, even if you can't accept a story on the whole, it is a film that a lot of people can at least find one or two things to appreciate so much to say that they do like the film. This is your first time viewing this, correct? Yep. All right. So this is going to be really interesting because I, I'm honestly not going to say much. Like, I, I don't really want to say much. Like, I love this film. It inspired me greatly. Like, as an artist, as a writer, the color palettes used in this film, I think, are phenomenal. Like, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of the way that the cinematography capture the contrasts in color and how that affected the mood of what action was going on on screen. I thought that was really, really, really well done for the time, especially for something that was handmade. But just kind of, uh, just kind of gonna sit back and let you let you take the home here. I'll ask you what you thought. Um, okay, give me some, some specifics so I know where to start. Well, I mean, what did you think of the story? The narrative? What did you think of, of how things played out and the characters that were, you know, involved in that story? Basically, I liked it. I thought it was interesting. It was very engaging. Mm -hmm. The whole time, <laughs> I just wanted to know what was going on. <laughs> um, I mean, it wasn't until about, like, maybe halfway-ish that I started to piece it together myself, like, okay, this is, this is how this is going, this is where this may or may not end up, but I don't, it was, it was weird. Now, were you able, prior to the third act, to foresee where it was gonna end up? No, because, not, okay. not like that. Um, you would be a, a, a cinephile savant <laughs> if you were able to, to do that, that's, in, that would be incredible. No, um... Okay, so I went into this movie without knowing anything about it. Literally the only things I have ever seen from it is that, like, iconic cover image. Yeah, Canada walking to the Walking to the bike. bike. Okay, that's the only thing I've ever, ever seen about this movie. And I've never, like, gone out of my way to look into it or anything. I just... Because I don't, I guess in my head I just thought, okay, this is like about racing or whatever. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> it's initial D. <laughs> but <laughs> I was very wrong, and I'm glad that I actually sat down and watched it because <laughs> my eyes have been opened <laughs> very much. So going into it completely blind made it a lot more fun of an experience for me. I think. Oh yeah, I mean, my first time watching the film was. Mostly blind. I think I had seen like small clips, nothing to the effect of a spoiler or anything like that. Um, so I saw it pretty blind when I saw it, but I also saw it like many years ago. Right. Which also um, changes like how I perceived it. Well, yeah, well, I mean, yes, but also I, there just wasn't the ease of access when I first uh, viewed the film to the information about the film. You know, the, the internet w wasn't where it is now. Right, yeah. Um, so, it just became really easy to see a movie without it being spoiled, and honestly, it's pretty easy now if you just don't put yourself in a position to have a movie spoiled. I mean, clearly. But, <laughs> I was able to not know anything about this movie at all for a long time. And it's one of the most influential anime films of all time. Yeah. And, I mean, rightly so, in my opinion. I think it has earned every bit of the accolades that it has received. 
if I had watched it now, I have friends that I know by this point would have already told me like oh, tons yeah. of stuff about it and shown me clips of it, especially the third act, because I love body horror and I love like body modification and things like that in films. So like that third act when Tetsuo, you know, becomes Tetsuo, uh, that was something very jaw dropping for me as a young person because I was probably 13 when I saw this the first time and I love to draw monsters like I, I love to do concept artwork for monsters and beasts and fantasy creatures and things like that so seeing the like morphing of the flesh for Tetsuo and things like that and the way his body was changing into these fanciful like non-humanistic non-earthly forms and, and stretching into these beastly fashions that was something that really grabbed me, but it would have been completely ruined for me by now. Honestly, I'm surprised that yeah. I've not seen anything else. Well, it, you're at a little bit of a benefit because right now, modern anime is dominating the market. And that's a true. lot of people aren't diving back into the older stuff. Like, yeah, that's true. Uh, a lot of the good older stuff is getting remade into new stuff that I won't necessarily say is subpar... But I'll definitely say, for instance, the new Berserk, I would not watch it over the original. And that goes for a lot of things. And I think some things that are being remade right now just aren't... There was no reason for it, uh, like, whatsoever. And I know that Akira is being remade into a live-action film, and that's been something that's been in the works for many years. And now they are moving forward with it officially, which is very exciting, but also very nerve-wracking, because this film is incredibly important to a lot of people. But yeah, the modern, the modern era of anime is causing a lot of people to kind of get hooked on that one animation style, you know, because it's very formulaic, so it's easy to get into each, like, character's design and things like that, and the structure of the screenplays and the scripts are also very formula. So it just kind of fits to follow each of those shows that are going on right now instead of getting a contrast in stories because it's a lot easier to follow all these things that are kind of marching along this, to the same beat. But you're missing out on a lot of good stuff like Cowboy Bebop and Trigun and Kenshin and, you know, of course, Samurai X and Turn and Ninja Scroll, which I think is, in, is, is a movie that is potentially equally as important to anime as Akira. But that's what's holding back a lot of information about these older pieces of anime is that the modern anime fan is really that because the market is so saturated with different like new anime all the time now they're just kind of stuck in this modern anime and there isn't a lot of marketing for former anime unless you're talking about things like Dragon Ball Z yeah. or uh, like My Neighbor Totoro mm -hmm. and things like that yeah. and you're not taking the grand scope of things because anime is incredibly diverse and there's a lot out there and what you see marketed on shelves is a very fractional amount of what is actually available and there's a lot of amazing stuff that a lot of people haven't been exposed to just because all they take in is what they see it's kind of a shame because a lot of good artwork is going unseen but back to the task at hand you you were talking about going into it blind and how, how that was beneficial to you. Is there anything that you wish you would have known beforehand? No. Not at all? No. Nothing at all? No. Good. That's good. <laughs> I'm sure you remember my reaction when uh, Tetsuo had his moment. <laughs> um, Which one? When he started to morph. That's the best word I can think. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm not I'm not bothered by body horror, but I will verbalize. Just it just comes out. I don't I don't think about it. Just the moment something shows up on screen, I say something. And I just remember feeling still a little confused, but very interested by that point. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, this took a wild turn. What's going on? <laughs> Um, and I, I'm particularly glad that I knew absolutely nothing about that. 
because that wouldn't have impacted me the same way if I had known about that before. Oh, absolutely. And also, out of context, it, it would have oh, yeah. just meant nothing because it, yeah. it really does need the explanation of everything else that's gone on. And there is a great deal in this film that I'll say you really can't truly understand if you're not familiar with the manga. But, that being said, I don't think it's imperative to read the manga to view the film. I think the film can stand on its own and is a very beautiful piece of artwork without needing to be part of the manga. Well, see, and that's, that's something else, too, yeah. that I've not read the manga, so just seeing the film blindly would explain why I was so confused for yeah, a while, because they, I mean, they give you, obviously, enough information for the movie to stand on its own, but it did feel like there was a lot of important information that may have made things a little clearer sooner. Um, Absolutely. Not that that's a serious problem. I mean, by the end of it, it was pretty clear what, <laughs> what and, Well, was going and they're on. fairly separate entities, too, because the stories are, are, are vastly different. Because the manga goes on to tell a very, very rich amount of story about all of these characters, whereas the film is given a very limited amount of time. Right because there is a broad cast of many like dynamic characters that have their own personalities and character types and it's important to touch on each one so they didn't get a whole lot of fleshing out but they did enough to keep you interested in what each one of them was doing yeah so I, I do I do enjoy how they how they framed that but it's not imperative to read the manga I've read the manga it's very good uh, I suggest that you read the manga if you're at all interested in re reading manga. Uh, it's it's a great read, and it's an important story as far as like understanding the development of each character if you want to go beyond the film. But it's not imperative whatsoever. You you don't have to, nah. uh, not to enjoy it. There were some key scenes that I wanted to ask you about and see what you thought of. The first one would be the scene where the gentleman from the rebellion group is taking the child in the beginning of the movie and he got sh gets shot dead by the police okay i was just wondering what you thought of that scene right there um that's when the confusion started okay <laughs> i can say that much because it wasn't made clear to me until that moment that that was even a child. <laughs> um, oh. Yes, I can understand that. <laughs> like, I was so confused by that. I was like, why is this small person oh. blue, first off? And Absolutely understand. Like, what is even happening here? Like, why are they running? What? Who's the bad guy? Was this person kidnapped? Like, what's who's happening? Who's the bad guy is the question of this movie. It really is. Yeah. And that, that's pretty much the question I had the whole time I was watching it. I was like, so who am I supposed to be rooting for here? Because there were times that I, I just flat out was not sure I, anymore. I, like, I didn't know who, whose side I was really supposed to be on. I don't know. I've, I've always interpreted the film as a message about human strength because of the way that they treat politicians and religions within the film and the way that they express the personal human strength and the virtues of humanity through Kaneda and how, like, kind of, he, he, you know, he's, like I've said, he's Superman, he's a goody yeah. two-shoes, he's, he's, he's just made of gold, he just wants to do good. Yeah. Like, and even in the flashback between he and Tetsuo, yeah. He's he's returning this doll that was lost and he got beat up for it. It's pretty clear that they want to express the strengths of humanity and the vitality of this, the human spirit. Uh, and that's how I've always interpreted it. Uh, you know, I'm sure other people interpret it different ways, but I've always interpreted it as that. Kind of relying more on self than relying on yeah. other external things. To get back to that, just that one scene. So like when, when that scene started, I still wasn't entirely sure what <laughs> what to expect out of this movie because that, that happens like really early on. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. I was still kind of like, what you know, what is even happening? There's like biker gangs and what's, you know, whatever. So this guy gets gunned down and I'm just like, okay, so 
This is a lot more violent than I thought it was gonna be. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's quite violent. Yeah. And I mean like for what it is, it it doesn't um I keep wanting to say exposed, but that's not the word I'm wanting. In uh, regards to what? The violence in it. Because it's not it's not like it's not like horror. It's just there's just violence. Oh yes, it's all relative to developing the plot yeah. and the narrative. Yeah. It's all very important to setting the scene for the tone of this social environment of all of these characters. Yeah. To know how violent and unstable their living world is, yeah. like their day-to-day -day is, is really important to understanding how these characters are, who they are, and why they've chosen to be that way. But yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to say on that. Oh, on that scene? <laughs> so on that scene? I mean, I don't... <laughs> okay, the next one is... Uh, the next scene I wanted to ask you about is when Tetsuo is hallucinating in the hospital bed. Hmm. And he sees the <laughs> giant car yeah. and teddy bear and stuff like that. I wanted to know how you felt about that one. It was just strange. Um, because I knew that he was hallucinating, but, well, at first I wasn't sure. <laughs> because the way it's set up, I couldn't really, I mean, I was still confused as to what was, like, really going on. <laughs> like, I was confused pretty much the entire movie until the end, and then I was like, okay, I think I got it. But really then, I wasn't sure it was a hallucination until the toys got big. Oh, okay. Because to start with, I thought, like, you know, what is happening here? Why? It was just the small toys walking just, around. Yeah, like, these toys crawling out of the bed, yeah. and I was like, what is happening? And I, I thought for a second, well, maybe he's just dreaming, something like that, but it turned out to be reality, and that he wasn't dreaming. He wasn't asleep, but he was just having these insane hallucinations of... Well, he actually wasn't even hallucinating. Well, true, he wasn't. <laughs> the... <laughs> it was, a it was the kids. Yeah. Was, um, was which was even weirder, ruse. and that, that made it a lot more confusing for me, because oh, yeah. I was like, why are these kids messing with him? What's the deal? Like, what? <laughs> why won't anybody just leave him alone? <laughs> but, I, I mean, I just, I, I had so many questions. Yeah. Really, the whole movie, but, <laughs> like, that scene in particular it's was... It's one of those kinds of movies. It really is. Yeah. And I mean, like, not that I had a problem with it, because I was, I was actively engaged trying to understand what, what is happening. What is the story you're trying to tell me? What is the significance of any of this? But it was very confusing, and it was weird. It was a trip. That's what it was. <laughs> the whole movie was a trip. But that scene in particular, I was like, all right, what? <laughs> what am I watching anymore? Because, <laughs> I mean... At that point, I thought, okay, so <laughs> I understand that the kid that was running away, he has some kind of importance. I got, I understood that much because, you know, who he was with got Which kid? in the beginning when the guy got shot and all that. Yeah, that's one of the three yeah, like, psychic but, children, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So after to that... To say it ignorantly, it's not as simple as they're psychic. <laughs> no. I know. I know. <laughs> um, did he have a name? What was his name? Well, they they have they all have uh, names and they also have numeric designations. It's, he, he said his name like once. Didn't yeah, he? I I don't remember his name. Okay. Well, anyway, so this kid, I understood. All right. So obviously, he held some kind of significant importance because there are all these people trying to catch him. And then Tetsuo ended up getting caught up in that so what I understood was well because he was there and saw this kid that now they have to take him and do something to him to either wipe his memory or just hold him whatever that's what I thought was going on <laughs> and then everything got flipped on its head when I saw him in the room and I was like so what exactly is happening here like why why do they have him here? Why are these kids messing with him? Why are there so many of these kids? <laughs> like, why isn't anybody saying anything? So, yeah, that that scene, like, threw me off hard. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. My personal favorite scene in the movie is the hoverbike uh, fight scene 
oh, yeah, sewer yeah, yeah, system yeah. type thing, and the piping system. That actually was really cool. I yeah, liked. when they're going <laughs> like down that. to try and save Tetsuo. Yeah. I really like that scene a lot. Uh, as far as that scene goes, with the, you know, illusions of the bear in the car and stuff, the, the thing that got me about that one was how seamless, like, the transitions were in the, in the illustrations yeah. and how the tone changed so dramatically without, like, the music having to change. And, and I really, really liked that, that the tone went from something that was, like, kind of cutesy and lighthearted and always having this little illusion, like, appear to him, and, and then it just went to horrifying and dark with these monstrous creatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that allowed him to recognize his personal abilities. Yeah. You know? Which was really important to develop the plot and to get us moving moving quickly towards the third act. Mm -hmm. I've always looked at that scene and just adored the palette of the colors that were used because it's such a dark scene for the most part, but they're still able to create a contrast that allows you to see everything very clearly because there's a lot of very small details, yes. like little flecks of things. And I, I definitely think that scene on its own could be discussed for several hours. Yeah. But uh, the, oh the the last the last big scene I wanted to ask you about was that final scene, and I've no I know you've touched on it already because you spoke about it in in your initial thoughts on the film. But uh, I just wanted to know if there was anything else you wanted to add to like what you thought of like all that stuff that went down in the end uh, you know, <laughs> with the little vials holding Akira's body and with military. Uh, characters and, and things like that. There were a lot of things happening Yeah, there it's a lot. It's um, taken. One thing that I noticed about this movie was that every time I thought I was beginning to understand what was happening, <laughs> <laughs> something else would happen and I would be like, uh, wait a minute, that doesn't that doesn't work with my theory. <laughs> what is, uh, what's going on? Yeah. And, um... You definitely get that. <laughs> the... Just that whole, I don't know, I don't even know what to say, <laughs> because at first it, it, it did just kind of gross me out, because I wasn't expecting it, and I was just like, uh, okay, that happened, mm -hmm. and then it just got worse, and worse, oh, yeah. and worse, and I was like, alright, so this is the movie now, yeah. <laughs> what is happening? It becomes a horror movie very quickly. Oh, very fast, like... <laughs> instantly so I was like okay uh, oh, yeah. when does this stop because this is disturbing and I well, until the very end it doesn't yeah no it keeps going it just keeps going yeah, it becomes that scene in poltergeist <laughs> except that little old lady is all the kids that are <laughs> that have psychic abilities oh god but yeah I um I don't know it, it just it just became more and more and more disturbing, and I, at that point, was just kind of like, okay, so, this is it. This is, this is the end. <laughs> uh, well, um, <laughs> in a manner of speaking, it was. I, yeah, I kind of. I just, I don't know. I was not expecting it to take that kind of turn, and then the fact that it happened so quickly, like, it happened so fast that I literally didn't have any other reaction than, ew, that's gross, okay. And then it just kept going, and I was like, well, all right, here we go. Did you expect Kaneda to survive, or? No, I did not. Um, I mean, well, I kind of did, just because he's that character, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, like... But I mean, once things started going, did you think it was gonna survive? Well, so the thing is, is that every time, you know, like I said, every time I thought I understood what was happening, something else would happen. So yeah. I, at this point, I was like, well, this will obviously either go one of two ways. It could surprise me and that he doesn't survive, or he'll fall into the, the trope category of, well, he's obviously the good kid, so he'll, he'll be fine, not even a scratch on him. <laughs> Which is what we ended up with. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I just, out of everything that happened, <laughs> that just, that surprised me. <laughs> because he shouldn't have survived any of that. No, absolutely not. He's a child. Yeah. Like, he, he shouldn't have the functionality to do this, but he rose to the occasion. That's why he's, that, he's 
a, the, the penultimate, like, definition for a hero character. Yeah. Like, and how you write one, especially in the time period that that film was written. It, he's He is absolutely that type of hero character. Yep. Uh, somehow he comes out of it with just a scrape on his cheek and that's all you get. Yeah. It's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> he should have been uh, smashed yeah. to mush mm -hmm. um, on multiple occasions. Oh yeah. If not shot a few times and uh, imploded. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> think his surviving being squished by Tetsuo was very that awesome. alone was like all yeah. right <laughs> but he was shooting him his lasers so <laughs> that's how he was able to get out of that yeah the power of friendship that's what saved oh, him oh yeah the power of friendship well it didn't save tetsuo uh, no but <laughs> well he became like it okay so this is how i interpreted what okay. ha what happened there i understood it as he and the other kids involved um, they became like this omniscient kind of force. So it's not that they. Well, perhaps at the very end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's. But like Tetsuo was the only thing that was that blob. Oh yeah, no, I mean yeah. like at the end of it all, once. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Everything was yeah. like said and done. That's kind of what's what's being said there. Like, okay, because I mean all of that was just weird. Yeah. It was just, Weird. That's that's <laughs> that's the only way to word that. But everybody just like accepted it. <laughs> and that, that was also yeah. weird. Well the only people left to accept it were, you know, Kaneda and his two associates and then the military. And that single member of the yeah. military. So there was only four people that really needed to accept it. There didn't you know Expressing the narrative would be purely for the audience's sake, like... I mean, yeah, like, I don't know, there wasn't obviously any need for any kind of, yeah. like, explanation. It was just at that point, I was kind of like, okay, so... Just come to... We're done we're now? Back to our dystopian <laughs> post-apocalyptic... Yeah, like, what happens now? ...building phase, where Tokyo's back underwater again. Yeah, so, I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, I just wanted to touch on a couple scenes because I thought it was important to, you know, give people who maybe haven't seen the movie a little window into what's going on. Yeah. But the last thing that I really wanted to touch on, the thing that I thought was kind of most grabbing to me, was the cinematography and, like, the way that they decided to frame a lot of shots in regards to perspective when it comes to, like, shooting the buildings of Neo Tokyo and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, like, I, I wanted to get your opinion on it. Like, scenes where they're you know, standing there with the girls, hanging over that balcony, looking down at the people, like, riding with the police, or uh, the scenes where the camera's just kind of panning up the city buildings, they're moving at different paces and things like that, you know, what, what were your thoughts on the color palettes used and the way they chose to design their shots? Uh, first off, I kept having to remind myself that all of this was done by hand. Yeah. It felt like every 10 or 15 minutes I was like, wait a minute, this... Somebody did this with their hand, yeah, and stunning. that's it. <laughs> and it just amazed me at how, oh, like, yeah. fluid everything was and how detailed it all was, too. Like, they're... Oh, it's brilliant. It was insane. It's phenomenal. One shot that stands out to me the most, that, that I remember the most, is when they're in the facility, whatever, um, and they're in one of, like, the, the playrooms or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's got the tree in it. Yes. Okay, that, out of the whole movie, that is what stood out to me, was the tree. I, I don't know why, but I, I loved it so yeah. much. <laughs> like, I just loved looking at that shot. It just was so pretty and weirdly peaceful, considering <laughs> what was going on yeah. around it. Like, I don't know, I just... Well, the color palette that was chosen for that scene was really, really interesting because it was really soft. It was, yeah. Like, it, was it was like very, very like nice, colors. yeah. And like it was comforting. cool soft colors. Yeah. So, yeah, it definitely had a contrast between the tone of the action and the tone of the 
background in the setting that these characters were in. Yeah, because like I can still see like Tetsuo standing on all this rubble and everything. There's just this tree in the middle of this room, and I don't know. Like it was such a weird thing. Like <laughs> thinking about all the rest of the movie, and then just that's what stood out to me. It has absolutely nothing to do with really anything else that's going <laughs> on. It's just like I don't know. Like that just amazed me. And it still does. Like, well, the imagery is a big thing for this movie. Like, capturing the tone of a situation with the imagery is really important. And, yeah. And that imagery is important to that scene. My favorite thing in the film is how they capture like water motion. Yeah. I think that's really. Incredible. I really like that too. That's why the scene with the hovercraft is mm -hmm. really. And so, like, how they were able to do that with the color palette within the water was really the same thing in my eyes in regards to what you were saying about the uh, tree room. Yeah. It's really contrasting with everything else that's going on. Color palette overall. Uh, I loved how vibrant certain colors were. Red especially. Oh yeah. It, that is so saturated. <laughs> That is important. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all I can see. Just thinking about it now, it's just red. Um, so much red. Yeah. A lot of copper tones. Mm -hmm. Things like that. There's a lot of red in other colors. And I noticed, too, like, I mean, there's just a lot of scenes where it's, like, that vibrant red on top of, like, really dull stuff, like oh, yeah. gray or white. It is the exclamation point oh, to yeah. the scenery. Yeah. I just, I don't know, I really liked how that stood out the way it did. Um, Absolutely. And I really like the night shots. Yeah. Uh, like at the very beginning when they are riding the bikes, because everything is so like neon looking. Oh yes, with the, the light trails behind yeah. the bikes. Yeah. Like that, that was That's really cool. Amazing. I liked I liked that stuff. Oh yeah. I'm sure that was not easy to achieve no. considering that they made the film the way that they did. Yeah. So I kept thinking about that too. I was like, wow, like, again, this is all made by hand. This looks yeah. so good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really kind of bound to be timeless. Yeah. Just because of its quality. Like, they, they spared no care when it came to constructing the film, and it really shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what makes you love it so much. Yeah. Well, I, I guess aside from that, what, 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 on a rating of, of one to five stars, where would you put this film? I'd say like a 4.5. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, obviously, I have my own gripes mm -hmm. about it, which we had discussed Oh, absolutely. Before. And, and, I mean, just to touch on those, it's it, your, your issue was a matter of, like, character portrayal in contrast to the social behavior you thought that they probably right. should have. Yeah. Which we ended up finding out that my thoughts were mostly right. Because I, I had an inkling yeah. that they were oh, yeah. between like 15 and 18, but that was never made 100% clear. Some of the characters, yeah. It's, it's, it depends on who, which character you're, right. you're talking about. Because um, we had a very long... Yeah. car ride discussion about that mm -hmm. because we were trying to like understand what I was even feeling about yeah. this movie yeah. and my biggest gripe was that I couldn't understand how old these characters were because it wasn't ever just like explicitly stated it was kind of just like a you should expect that they are this age but I my brain couldn't I was already confused as it was anyway <laughs> and it didn't help that I couldn't understand how old the characters were so, like, it just further made things more confusing for me because I started the film thinking, okay, they're, like, in their 20s, but then, like, the further it went on, the younger and younger they got for me, and I was like, I don't really know <laughs> where they're supposed to fit. And, and you know, I had explained to Blake that I, I felt like the absolute youngest that they could have been was 15 just based off of, like... <laughs> their their physical appearance and then like how they would talk to each other but otherwise I had no other way of assuming <laughs> like how old they were yeah but then well, I mean they unless you read the manga they they're not they're not explicit about right and I mean not that that like ages. 
super mattered, but like it kind of did. So I don't know. It, it was like I had I had a, a it was frustrating for me to try to understand what was going on there. But after discussing that, things started to make more sense because <laughs> we did the research and found out oh, yeah. they were like 15 and 16. And I was like, okay, that that makes literally everything make so much more sense. There was oh the the only other gripe that I had was that we watched the uh, the English dubbed version. Yeah. Which was fine, but <laughs> wow, um, <laughs> there were just some some phrases and some things they were saying that I was just like, this is bad. This is very bad voice acting, and I just <laughs> like halfway through it. We took like a little intermission, and that was the first thing I said. <laughs> was like, this voice acting is terrible, but whatever. Some of it's a little wonky. I mean, like, I got used to it after a little while, but like the first little bit, it was absolutely jarring, and I was <laughs> like, okay, is this how this whole movie's gonna be? Because <laughs> it was so bad at first, and I was like, wow, okay. Um, but I, I moved past it. I got used to it, and I was like, okay, whatever. It, it, by that point, I realized it was just, you know, bits and pieces here and there where they were just trying to make it fit with how <laughs> the characters were animated. So it was like, okay, I can forgive you a little bit, but whew, it was not pleasant yeah. to the ears. <laughs> like, some of it was just, it was really, really wonky. <laughs> like, yeah, it just didn't, it just didn't, it didn't work flow with what was going on. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it would take you out of the feeling that you were supposed to have watching this, the narrative. Play. Yeah, because yeah. like one of the 100%. big one of the big ones that really sticks out to me is uh, like towards the beginning there where they were uh, taking that kid back mm -hmm. um, and the other kid shows up in his like fancy little floating chair or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what it was that he said, but like he said like one sentence and it, it, it was like very serious and like well delivered, but there was like no pause in between that ending of sentence to the beginning of the next one, and the next sentence just sounded god awful. I don't, yeah. I can't even remember what it was, it, but it was something along the lines of "Okay, let's go now" or whatever, something like that. And it instantly took me out of the entire yeah, the scene. I was just like, "Whoa!" It's the restriction of having to fit the animation. Yeah, which yeah. you know, like I understand. <laughs> But it was still uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I will criticize that because it, it did completely ruin that moment. Well, that's why it lost the point five. Yes. It, you know, yeah. That's why it's not a five. I mean, honestly, it is. That's, that, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there were a few times that I would just, like, laugh to myself because they would just say something and I'm just like, mm, no, <laughs> that sounded bad. But whatever. Other than that, it was a good movie. I can I I see why it is. Excuse me. Am I boring you? Yeah. I'm <laughs> so I can understand why this movie is so important to. Oh yeah. Anime. In general, like I I can I can appreciate it for what it is for sure because like a lot of hard work obviously went into this it's insane how well detailed it is how fluid the animation is and the story is like super interesting i want to read the manga just so that i can understand <laughs> everything completely because i'm i'm still kind of like uh, I kind of understand, like, all right, so all of this stuff happened, and I, I understand that, but how it strings together is where I'm like, <laughs> but why? <laughs> um, but that's okay, because it was still an entertaining movie, and I still liked it, so... Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's, it's fine, whatever. It's a good movie. Still only a 4.5. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to argue out of it. I'm surprised you gave it a 4.5, honestly. What do you think I would give it? I don't know. Probably like a 3.5. Really? Yeah. You have... Well, I mean, you just said, like, that was quite a bit. But... Because, I mean, honestly, where it is with me is at a 4.5. But that's just because... I think its lack of character building does detract from a person's ability to 
really attach themselves to these characters. I do agree with that too. Um, the cinematography and the and the score. I love the score of this film. Yeah, that's really good. And the screenplay and the color palette are all incredible, and I love them. And that's why it gets a four point five for me. But it can't have that last point five because of its inability to fill out its characters, you know, structure. And it, they just don't give you enough. Even the people you follow prominently really aren't elaborated upon as far as who they are. So it it kind of lacks in that manner. But aside from that, it's a brilliant film. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. And I think the thing that gets me most about the film is the score. Its score is absolutely phenomenal. It suits every scene, and it brings the tone exactly to where it needs to be to make you feel the action of the scenes. And, and that's really important. And anime relies on sound and music in order to really set its mood, and this one does so very, very well. That's my only grievance about this, is, is that uh, aside from that little bit of character development missing, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I absolutely recommend this film to you. I think everyone should watch this movie. If you've already seen it, I recommend you watch it again, because it's very, very good. It's worth a watch, and it's worth a second watch. Yeah. I guess to round things out, I'll give my music suggestion of the day. Um, okay. Uh, Give Blood by Rain Machine. That's going to be my track suggestion of the day. And my movie suggestion of the day, for anybody who hasn't seen it, is the Mystery Science Theater 3000 movie, where they riff the film This Island Earth. What are your suggestions? I didn't think about it. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Troy. Troy? <laughs> right. For those of you who haven't seen Troy and it's 900th viewing on FX <laughs> on a Saturday afternoon. Okay, that's one of those movies that it's like absolutely terrible, but yeah, I, I oh love it because it's so bad. Yeah, oh yeah, it is, it, it is entertaining. It's, it's, it's so shut, entertaining. It's shut off your brain. But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. If you have any criticisms, critiques, ways to reform the video to make it something you enjoy more, just let us know down in the comments or reach out to us in our other social networking, which will be linked down in the description. Uh, we appreciate your time. Hit the bell so that you get notified when we put up stuff because we're not putting up stuff kind of in a formula way yet. Yet. But we are getting there and we really appreciate your patience with this. We're working very hard to get our living situation worked out and our working situation worked out because it's kind of touch and go with the COVID thing. Mm -hmm. It has affected both of our work environments. so. It's, it's really hard, but we appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much for listening to us harp on about movies. Love you guys, and we hope you have a great day.